What if that nagging feeling in the back of your neck was real? What if those hands reaching out from the dark that you believed were there, were there? What if the monster in the basement really existed? And what if there was really something under the bed? Would you have the courage to face your fears? It happens to those who aren't deemed strong enough in human society. The men in odd blue suits with red marks streaking across the chest and stomach come and take the ones deemed unworthy away after their coming-of-age ceremony. Nobody knows their destination except for the adults, for whenever the men come, the parents of the unworthy begin to cry. It is a sad spectacle to behold. Only one person was persistent enough about it keeping his child he resorted to following the Takers. He was never heard from again. We know the Takers haven't caused him any harm. They never touch a soul. Just lead them to whatever destination holds the unworthy. The sun had just risen. The birds chirped and everything was normal when I awoke. It was a good day. My 16th birthday was to be exact. I didn't know what form of employment they would schedule me in, but I was excited to find out. I mean... This was the day where I would come of age to be a man. I ran downstairs, but as soon as my foot fell on the final step, a loud knocking was heard at my door. I slowly approached. My parents were asleep, and I didn't wish to wake them. Slowly, I opened the door to meet with six tall men in blue suits. The first smiled with a kind face. He reached his hand out for mine to shake. I obeyed his request, shaking lightly and greeting with my name. We are the Grim Society, or Takers as you call us. We have looked over your files and deemed you not physically strong enough to give to society. My throat went dry when they said that. I didn't know how to respond. I gargled a bit, trying to choke out something, before two of the men grabbed me and tied my hands behind my back. They tied a long red bandage over my eyes, so I couldn't see. I cried out to my father, to only the sounds of screams and sadness. My mother was screaming for dad not to let them take me, but I was hastily pushed into some kind of vehicle. The blindfold was removed. The first thing I saw was the kind face of the first man, and he smiled warmly that gave me a bit of comfort from my current situation. It'll be alright. It doesn't hurt for long. All comfort dried up, and I stared shocked at this man. We will be there soon. Now act your age and face what you're about to see with dignity. I tried and tried to reason with him. I didn't want to do this. All I wanted to do was go home. To with which he always replied, Face was coming to you with some dignity. His face shifted from kindness to annoyance. He tied the red bandage around the back of my head, forcing it so I couldn't speak. I stared at the man fearfully, but looked out the window to see nothing but long columns of trees. I didn't know what to say, but they moved by getting taller and taller. All I thought about was home. It was near Christmas time, and the soon snowfall brought back so many memories. I began to sob lightly, thinking of all the good times my family as we enjoyed the holidays. But that quickly ceased as the taker laid his hand across the back of my head. At your age, he spat out in disgust. I don't know what we began to drive on. I knew it wasn't road. The van slowed a bit, and the ground was blue. It seemed to be frozen solid. To my horror, I realized we were driving on ice. I began to panic, thinking we were bound to fall through eventually, but we never did. Slowly, we rolled on to snow, and I felt a little safer, opposed to my current situation. The bandage was untied, and the man wrapped around my arm, as if I was going to get shot, which I did. A long needle was slipped into my arm, and an odd green liquid was injected into me. I felt something begin to mold my head. My ears began to grow larger and pointed. I cried out in pain as I shrank slowly as well, the bones of my leg grinding slowly making them shorten. I didn't know what was happening. The taker was laughing like it was all a joke, and we hit a sudden bump to which the taker said, Poor Jim! I figured it was the man who followed. We continued on. The snow got deeper and deeper until it almost reached the van's window. I was growing more and more afraid. My clothes fell off as I was almost half my original size. They wrapped a cloth around my waist, hiding away my private area. The van came to a jerking stop, and I fell on my seat. The taker rose, which was the first sign of life in a while, only to grab me and throw me in the snow. It began to depart as the man uttered, 
Have fun, boy. He left with a loud laugh. The cold crept up my back slowly until my entire body was blue. I couldn't stand with my new shorter legs. Movement was very painful. I slowly began to drift into sleep, hearing a soft, kind laugh. It was odd, but all I heard was, Ho, ho, ho.